Hi everybody, it's Chatters. Welcome to the first episode of what's going to be my DIY and woodworking channel. This episode is going to be making a bunk bed for my boys. Uh, they're aged two and six, so um, if you want to know how it was made in a little bit more detail, then uh, stick around. The bench in front of you uh, is an 80th birthday present for a family member that was finished last week. He's very happy with it. Uh, the, my next job, and hopefully again, the second episode will be a set of four picket fences for my mum's garden wall, and it also a gate that matches. Right, at the moment this is just a hobby, uh, but hopefully if it takes off, uh, the channel starts getting a lot of subscribers, wink wink nudge nudge, then um, hopefully I'll be able to put a lot more time into it, and uh, produce a lot more items for you. If my finger goes over the lens of the camera, or if the sound isn't very good quality, then please bear with me and remember this is my first time. Right, these are the plans and designs. Uh, I'm not going to concentrate or get too close on them because they did get altered during the build process once I noticed certain things that would look better. Uh, they were there mainly for the cut list and for measurements to be taken but I did make some alterations which actually cut down on the amount of wood that I used. I used them mainly to highlight any potential problems uh, prior to the build and uh, they do come in as a very good reference. Okay so here we've got the wood that's been delivered it's all 3 by 2 and 4 by 2 stud work just normal CLS timber that you can buy at normally at really discounted rates there's a couple few, quite a few pieces that I've already cut and there's the cut list I'm going through each one crossing them off as I cut them I've just done this one here at 1262 yeah. so ok that's in there set up as a stop block for the micro chop saw I'm cutting 16 lengths at 800mm these are going to be forming the platform for the upper bunk there can't be any variation because the side panel is going to be attached to them so anybody that's a little bit more inexperienced setting up the stop block is a lot more efficient with time and also a hell of a lot more accurate to make sure you they all come out at exactly the same length just a couple of safety tips then one is not to retract the guard the way that I have on the on the saw. My preference though is that I like to be able to see where the blade is and see where I'm cutting and secondly as well you'd hold the piece of wood whilst you were cutting it but I'm trying to film so um, I cheated a bit. You can see here it's bang on 800 mil. Right then a lot of what I do is working with recycled materials very often pallet wood. Uh, here when using stud work and unfortunately it's got some defects in it so all you have to do really is put some consideration and box a little bit clever with where each piece is going to be used so I've kind of gone through at the very beginning um, to see which pieces look best and which pieces are going to be most on display and just put the best pieces in the best places okay here's one of the changes that was made from the original plans there was originally going to be five pieces of stud work stacked on top of each other forming a headboard but I decided it looked better and more in keeping with the design if there was just a three and it had gaps in between. So the horizontal rails that you can see there are going to be secured into the post, the upright post with pocket holes. So if you haven't got any experience with the pocket holes it's just two screws put into the ends on a slight angle and they go into those rebates that you can see there at the top of that post. They'll be glued into the rebates and that will form a really nice strong joint. Those rebates have been cut out using the crosscut sled there. And what I'll do is set up the stop block and put uh, an insert in. Basically, that insert ensures the exact width which cut out of the post so that there's a nice tight fit from the horizontal rail into the joint. So you'd place the insert next to the stop block, put your post in, and then you'd make your first cut through the blade, knock the insert out the way, and trust that it's the right size, and blindly 
go through with your second cut. Okay, so the first cut's already been made on on this shot, and then removed the insert, and then started chopping out all the wood from the inside of the frame. Again, this is a really good method for consistent cutting, and you can see here how well the offcut of the Fig 2 wedges into the joint. So here I've done a dry fit to the rear panel. want to see how it's looking. Make sure that all the joints are fitting well before I go too far, run away with myself. I've put some of the pocket hole screws in just to hold it together and there you can just see how nicely the joint fits in all the way around. The uh, one thing I am going to do though is that I'm going to round over all the edges of those joints just to uh, highlight them. On this side though you can see that there's a slight gap that's not by the size of the rebate that's been cut out. What's happened there is the pocket hole screws coming in from the rear um, have twisted the wood ever so slightly round. It's not going to be too much of an issue. When I glue it, it's going to be under time pressure and that should hold it. And also there's going to be a screw coming through there from the end panel through the post and into the uh, horizontal rail, which will have the effect of pulling it in if it needs to and closing the gap up like that. Okay, this is just showing off the rounding off of all the edges of the horizontal rails. I also did the ends so that as the two pieces of wood go in together for the joints, it just shows off the, the joint. Um, I've used a, a router table that you can see there. It's not a permanent one, I've only thrown it together for the job. I've wanted one for a while and when I get round to it I will make a better one. But um, it actually really worked out well. Okay, just a couple of stills showing how it was coming together. Just double checking everything went together and the size was all correct. This is the first frame then that's fully been put together. It's all been glued up. Pocket hole screws are all in and it's had a, a good sand. Each piece had a good sand before being put together. The idea was that I was going to put the frame together as is and then once I've drilled the holes out um, for the countersinking of the screws to put the frames together then um, I can look at doing the final sanding afterwards because I'm going to look at plugging up the holes from the countersinks. Here I'm just wiping off some of the squeeze out from the joints and unfortunately one of the knots has fell out. But not to worry. I've also used the router which was especially loud um, and detrimental to my neighbour's ears, I think. So I tried to get it all out of the way as quickly as possible. Cut out the channels in the posts and in the horizontal rails for some perspex, uh, some perspex panels that are going to be going in the front of the bed so that we can display photographs or artwork that the boys produce. There's the perspex. And then the back of the perspex to hold the, the pictures in place is going to be some uh, a blue backing, use, uh, which is called 4X, which is condensed foam, but condensed to the point where it's actually like plastic. Okay, these are the two rails for the top bunk mattress support. There's 14 rebates cut out of each one. I've temporarily screwed them together for the cutting purposes. And there's the 800mm supports. All the frames are finished here, they're all glued up, screwed up, and uh, there's the foot frame, or footer frame. This is the support for the top bunk. You've got the two cross pieces that are oriented the same as the, the sides there, and then all the ones in between are rebated in, and it is absolutely rock solid really happy with how that came out. It was a lot of work but worth it. This is the headboard end. You can see there the three top pieces that go horizontally. They're the headboard and they're the um, where the design changes was made at the very beginning. I think that worked out nicely. I don't think it would look right if they were stacked on top of each other. This is the front panel. Uh, the top rail there is for support so that it doesn't fall out of bed and here we've got the polycar clear polycarbon 
pieces in between they're currently secured against the one edge of the channel so that the uh, they're pressed up against the adhesive so that can go off overnight and then here I've got to admit this is a cheat this is a storage unit a trofast storage unit from IKEA that I'm using as a staircase far too convenient that it was already the perfect size, it was kind of designed around it. Kirsty had to give me an hand getting these up the stairs because look how close this was to not fitting. Like really lucky because I never even measured and didn't even think that was going to be close. Ta-da! All put together, really happy. You can see how big it is in the room doesn't impact too much um, everything went together really nicely there's a couple of little issues where the post have bowed ever so slightly because it's just stud work um, one of the pitfalls of it really but nothing that a bit of clamping uh, won't fix especially when it's all screwed together it'll be fine the steps are going to be at the end behind the doorway where I've just shown and uh, we'll be able to climb up there We've managed to build it so that it misses the mural. I've just got to add Archie's name to the top of that now that he's sharing a room with him. I've used these three inch deck screws because I already had them and a lot of what I was I do as I said earlier was, was about using recycled materials or things that I've already got. So I haven't had to pay for them at all. Um, the one thing I did get was some four inch gold screws from screw fix they're four inches so that they fit through the end frame the post and into the cross rail as i said earlier with the, the the twist on the post when i put the pocket screws in that will just pull it all nicely so i'm clamping up where the misalignment was you can just see the misalignment there just sticks out just a couple of mil nothing serious so just before I put the screws through, I'm just going to attach the, the clamp. That will line up the two edges nicely. Unfortunately, I chose the worst place to film because you can see that another notch come out, which is disappointing, but again, not the end of the world. Just put those screws in. Put the middle one in first so I can just remove the clamp the issue. and then the rest of it. All nice and in line again. And then once all together, release the kids upon it for a, te a test run just to see how it went, and they loved it, absolutely right. loved it. So that test run allowed me to make a decision on the handrail. Basically, Jack was fine either way, but when the babies were coming down, they just looked precarious. Uh, I didn't know the look of it, so I decided to go with the handrail. For some reason, this part of the video again has come out in black and white. I hadn't selected that at all. I'm not looking to where that is happening, but this is the blue 4X backing for the polycarbon I've just cut it down to size so it wedges in there look at the back of the polycarbon securing any photographs or artwork that we want to put in there <coughs> in place that's Jack on his first roller coaster a greater man of the Ben 10 ride he was really proud of it so I put that in there and there's the majority of the finished product uh, I'm really happy with it I did notice at the end the foot end just above the stairs it looks like it needs another bit of 4x so I'm going to go with a yellow panel there so here's some quick sketches for the handrail again just to get things straight in my head make uh, try and overcome any potential problems before we get to the build process these two rails at the post at the bottom are going to be secured through the IKEA unit there and there 
and then the top one is going to be near the wall but it won't be right up against the wall if I want to have an even gap between the posts so I'm going to have to cut down another post the right width and then use that as like a wall plate secure it to the wall and then the top post will be glued up against that securing it then to the wall um, seamlessly without any uh, fixings on show it should still be removable in the future I've just gonna have to then separate the two pieces of wood and on then the top of the post will be cut like a tenon and then all the way along the bottom of the handrail I'm going to run it through the table saw at the correct depth and cut out a channel for the tenon to fit into and uh, be glued on. And there you can see the handrail still in the clamps. So there's the finished product. I've really enjoyed making this one. I'm really happy with how it came out. If you like it too then please give me the thumbs up on the video. Uh, if you really like it subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll have another one coming out soon. Thanks again for watching. Catch you later.